Jamie? Um, hey, Donna. I don't know. If you have solder cutters like this, they should have that hole. It's kind of kind of easy to miss it. You know, because if these, if these were intended for both, or, or if you bought them just to cut flat, they should have the hole in there so you can do wire as well. They're pretty nifty. All right, let's see how, oh, I'll go ahead and do that other, where is it? You know, I lose stuff right, oh, here it is. I lose stuff right in front of my face. All right, so here's another one. Do that again. And I need my medium solder paste for this. And you know, you don't really have to make these marks if you know if you know exactly where you're going, but sometimes you get confused or whatever, and um, and you might turn your concho just a little bit, so it's just easier. To mark it and then there's no mistaking where to apply your solder paste or your paste solder whichever it's just enough to have that jump ring grab onto it all right oh that's hot yes i just did solder there didn't i So I want to make sure that I line up, line up the jump ring with the center point of this concho. And then I'm going to put my hummingbird holder there so it doesn't move. Spray some flux on here. Warm it all up. I hope you guys can see everything okay. Don't dare get any closer with my phone for fear of burning it. And I'm working kind of blind, like I said earlier. Um, but I've had success with it, so... Flip that over. Just hit it on the back just a tiny bit, just to make sure everything's soldered on there. Okay. You see the difference between this had didn't have any flux on the back and this. I mean, it's still kind of caca, but um, it'll it'll clean up pretty easy. All right, so I quench this one, and I'm going to put this in the pickle and take out the other one. have put a little basket in this jar so I could grab my piece easier but 
I didn't think about it. Uh, let's put this one in there. Let that clean up in there for a few minutes. Okay, so this one came out of the pickle. I don't have my brass brush with me, unfortunately. That's in the other room. So that would be my next step is to brass brush this on both sides, get it all cleaned up. But in lieu of that, I am going to Try some steel wool, but on the reverse side, because I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. But I think so. Actually, that's not important at this stage. What's important is to just make sure that you have a clean area where you're going to attach the uh, bezel cup. So this is clean enough for that. Alright, these hummingbirds get very hot too, so be careful with that. Um, Cindy, uh, uh, Eli, Eli, Eli Gamini has uh, a Facebook page. That's it. Thank you, Marianne. He sells them, and you just go to his Facebook page and message him, and he will take care of you. He will show you, uh, or at least on his page, it shows you uh, the different varieties that he has. So, uh, uh, you know, you can pick from those. I like this. This is a single, I think this is a standard single uh, hummingbird right here. And then there is one that has two weights on it. I don't use this one as much as I use this one, but like I had said earlier, I ordered just this morning, I ordered two that are shorter. They're about this, this size right here. And I think I'm going to probably like those the best of all of them because, um, I could work on the tripod. The tripod screen is uh, a lot smaller. And when I was trying to uh, get this all arranged on the screen, I was overhanging with this one. So that's why I thought the shorter ones would be better. So it doesn't hurt to have several of them because there are certain projects where you need to hold uh, a bunch of stuff down while you're soldering, and uh, that makes it a whole lot easier. He's got all the pricing information, and uh, he gets stuff out right away. Is very easy and nice to work with. All right, so now we're going to put this little uh, bezel cup on here. And I've already got the solder on here like we just did. So I'm going to just put a little flux on here. Okay. And then I'm going to place my bezel cup right in the center. Be very careful to get that in the center. Now, this one is tough to hold down with, with these kinds of uh, holders. So the best I can do that I do is kind of just stay, stay ready with my solder pick to nudge it if it moves because a lot of times after you've put the, uh, the flux on there, it kind of bubbles up a little bit. And in this situation, well, maybe I could just try that. I'll, I'll try to uh, heat up the flux first and uh, see if I can still see where the center is after the flux bubbles up. Your, 
flame moving because this is where I scorched uh, the other one that I did. The first one that I did, I scorched the concho because I was just, wasn't paying proper attention and, um, and I just let it get too hot. I might just give it a little kit more on the side here. dare do anymore. This is really a pretty simple uh, project. Not a whole lot of steps to it. Not any massive soldering. All right, and then we'll just clean this one up to put the bezel cup on it. There's that little diamond that's right in the center of that concho, so that's that's where you want to place that bezel cup, right on that center diamond. Yeah, thanks for posting that information on Ely. That's uh, it's very helpful for those of you that don't know about these holders, it makes uh, your soldering life a whole lot easier. For your soldering experience, I should say. All right. I'll solder this bezel cup on and then we'll make the ear wires and put it all together. be good to have one that had a thin enough, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, this little leg, um, and had more of a curve. Maybe I'll talk to Ely and see if he has anything like that, or if he could make something like that. Because if it could fit within this bezel cup, then you know it's not going to go anywhere. So that would be kind of a neat thing. 
to have. So I'll talk to him about that. Uh, it looks like it could have been a little bit better. Let's see here. Sometimes I get nervous with these little pieces because I'm afraid I'm going to um, burn through them. That has to be on there. Okay. So let that cool a sec and then quench it. Oh, you used... Oh, okay. You used them to make the, the birdhouses? Yeah, I mean, they're good for, like, all kinds of things. Um, you know, I've seen people have four or five of them on one project, uh, which really makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so put this in the pickle. And we'll work on the ear wires. Okay. All right. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Oh, glad to have that off. It's really, really, really important that you have good ventilation if you're using paste solder. There's no two ways about it. Here, like I was saying, because you have this rim here, that's kind of like in the way, so you only have this space that's here, and I was having a hard time uh, getting the, the hummingbird to stay in the area that I wanted. It was like too long, and that's why I was saying those little short ones would be on here really nice. Then you can take your torch and, and heat from underneath and, you know, it will, uh, the solder will flow a lot faster that way. And um, you can see what you're doing. So just another tip. All right. Hey, Deborah. Yeah, I know. Working is, it's, it's a good and a bad thing. So you got to do what you got to do, but you can always watch them on replay. Uh, just, um, and I check usually after the fact, if people have questions on there, I try to address whatever I can. Um, but yeah, it's a lot nicer if you can catch them in while they're live. All right. So let me move this stuff off of here and get my wire. In the kits, you should have gotten two pieces of, I think, three inch. Uh, I think that's what I cut, was three inches of wire for each ear wire. Uh, let's see here. Still need my torch and my quench bowl. And I'm using 20 gauge wire of fine silver. This is fine silver. The rest of the stuff in the kit is sterling. All right, so I'm going to cut three inches. You're going to have a little waste. There's, um, I'd rather have a little waste uh, that come up too short. And you can always use that waste uh, to make balls. And uh, so it's not really waste. It's always something that you can use uh, in a different way. All right, so I've got two pieces of 20 gauge fine silver wire. <clears throat> and my torch, my quench bowl. 
and my utility pliers. Raise the camera up a little bit. Okay. Get my paper towels out of the way so I don't catch them on fire. The first thing I'm going to do is make the bald ends on the um, wires. right at the very tip of the blue cone. I don't think I'm in the frame here. Okay, the very tip of the blue uh, cone here, which is about right here. That's the hardest, hottest point of the flame. And look how fast that draws a bead. Go maybe just a tad larger, but if you try to do too much, sometimes the ball just drops off. Okay, so that's a nice uh, ball at the end of the wire. Okay, quench that. Second one, right there, and you try to make it uh, match if you can. There's just nothing like fine silver to make bald uh, head pins or ear wires. Really nice. Really nice. Okay. Um, the wire pieces are three inches. They should be three inches long. But you are going to have a little bit of waste. But, um, I'd ra like I said, I'd rather have that than come up too short. And some people like their ear wires longer. Um, longer than I like them, but, you know, that's a personal preference. So now you're going to use uh, round nose pliers. You need bailing pliers of some sort. You don't have to have these exact ones, but um, these come in handy for lots of things. I think this is the medium size. Maybe it's the large. I'd have to check for sure. Um, But yeah, you could even use a, a pen or a pencil or something like that. It depends on how large you want that curve to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my round nose pliers and put them right at the base of the ball and then just curve it to almost touch. So it's like that. Can you see that? Okay, so then I'm going to take the bailing pliers and I always have to think a minute which way I want it to go. It's better to be safe than sorry. All right, so I've got the bailing pliers with the little loop facing me, and I'm going to push the wire until it touches the back, almost touches the back of the loop, the small loop. 
So now you've got your kind of shepherd hook look wire right there. And then this is where you determine how long you want your ear wire to be. This would stab me in the neck if it was this long on my neck because I have a short neck. So I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm going to make a little bend, just a little bend, not anything too pronounced, just a little bend. If you look at earring wires that are already made, they all seem to have that little bend. And then I'm going to cut off maybe, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so of the wire. So then it looks like that. Okay. Now I'm going to make my other wire, but then we still have one thing else to do, a couple things to do with this yet. But I want to try to make those ear wires as uniform as I can. And a lot has to do with where you start off uh, with the tines of the plier, how large that little loop is going to be. You can always mark your pliers with a Sharpie where you want to put your piece in. So that way you get the same size every time. Um, it's totally up to you. But I'm going to try to mimic the first wire as much as I can. And then put this in with that loop facing me. And then push this wire around. Pretty simple. Here is where I want to line these two guys up. And they are different. They're not the same exactly, but they're close. And then kind of bend the wire a little bit and then cut off. So it's about an eighth of an inch, I'd say. So you've got your two wires here. Now, being that these are uh, fine silver wire, they're soft. So we're going to do a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do, and keep your little scraps. Like I said, you can make little balls out of them later. Um, I'm going to get my bench block and my chasing hammer. And right at this arc, or the arch, or curve, whatever you want to call it, this is where I'm going to hit with my chasing hammer and kind of just spread this out just a little bit. It's a nice look. It hardens that area. But it's very easy to hit the ball when you're using your chasing hammer. So I sacrificed my finger uh, and <laughs> put it there and... Most of the time, I don't hit my finger. You could use a craft stick, popsicle stick, whatever, if you wanted to, or hold it with something else so that you don't hit it. But I'm just going to hammer just this arched area just a bit. On one side is enough. go. And then I'm going to use a cupper, which I didn't put out. I have one here. Right? Okay, then I'm going to use a cupper and I'm going to file or smooth the wire edges, ends. This is a cupper. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's just got a hole in it. It's got these little ridges inside, and you just put your wire in there, and it helps kind of round those edges off a little bit. If you don't have one of these, that's okay. You can use a, like an emery board or something like that to uh, file the sharpness off because you don't want to stab your earlobe when you're 
putting these in. It just takes a little bit off. And I don't think I have the right size in here. They come in all different sizes, but this is what I have by me, so that's what I'm using. this size it but it, but it's small um, I know that's not helpful I bought an assortment size pack from Euro tool it's like in a nice little pouch and it has each one of the different <clears throat> graduated sizes and they don't have any marking on them and I find that very frustrating and I called Euro tool and I said I have a suggestion <laughs> you know that you need to we need to know what size these are so we can use them with the right size wires and they thought it was a great suggestion but I still don't have that so I'll try to find out but it's uh, it, I know it's small I know it's small um, 